Hey teenager, Brother Josh Geisler is back here with another teen challenge. Today is May the 7th, 2020. I pray that you are doing well, staying charged up for God, staying connected for God, and are still praying for our church and reading your Bible. Hey, we got exciting things that we're going to happen today, talk about, have a good interview, some more funny clips, and I uh, hope everything's going well. Hey, have an announcement. We are going to have another Youth Zoom tomorrow. Youth Zoom activity tomorrow. That is Friday, May the 8th. We're going to be doing it at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Uh, messages and um, invitations will be sent out today just to remind you what's coming up. But hey, spread the word. Tell your friends. Jump on. And we're going to have another fun time. Get some gift cards away. Do some fun activities on the Zoom activity. So tomorrow, Zoom Youth, BBC, Valley Baptist Church at 11 a.m. Hey, I've... Um, Everyone's been telling me they've been enjoying my bloopers and laughing a lot harder than my jokes. I don't understand why, but yeah, I do. Uh, but hey, here's some more videos. I hope you enjoy. Okay, young person, it is prayer time. The Bible does say in Luke 18, verse number 1, at the end of the verse, it says that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Young person, let's keep on praying and don't give up on praying. God does answer prayer. Sometimes we don't have the immediate answer right away, but God answers prayer. I know God answered my prayer this week. I was able to win some of the Christ. That was a personal prayer of mine. Thank God that he answers prayer. and God does want everybody to be saved. But let's keep on praying. Hey, uh, request number one, let's pray for America. Amen. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for a revival in America, a spiritual healing and a physical healing. Let's pray that we'll turn our eyes to God. Keep on praying for that. We cannot give up on that. And let's pray for a physical healing that God will give us safety and protection. Not just today, not just in our state, in every single state. I pray that God get a physical healing and, and spare uh, people dying. And let's uh, pray for a vaccine. That God will give us some medicine. God does use that. And let's keep on praying for revival in our country. Let's pray for our president. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our vice president, for our governor. Pray for our representatives. Let's pray for this also. Here's another one. Let's pray for our elections that come up in 2020. We already need to start praying for that that God will show us grace and give us good leaders in our in our in our Congress, in our state, in the whole country. Let's pray for our presidential election also. 
Pray for that. We need to pray for that right now. Let's pray for our medical professionals. Pray for those doctors and nurses that are on the front lines, doing their best, trying their best to keep people healthy. Let's pray for our doctors. Let's pray for our church family. Let's pray for each other. We've mentioned this before. Let's pray for, just think of some friends or think of some family members or uh, think of some people in our church that you could pray for that God would bless them, whether it be work, whether it be health, whether it be relationships. Let's pray for marriages to be strengthened. Let's pray for relationships between youth and their parents to be strengthened. We need that. Let's pray for our church family. Let's pray for our missionaries. Cannot forget about those all across the world that are counting on us to support them and pray for them. That's the best way we can support our missionaries is through prayer. Let's pray for, um, just think about this, ladies expecting. We have several ladies in our church that are expecting babies coming. I think a lot of y'all know who it is. We did have one, was born uh, last week, I believe, the Martinez's, um, Brother Hugo Martinez. And his wife, Erica, they had a baby boy, so pray for them and for the health. Let's pray for mercy and grace upon our nation as a whole, Lord. We, we need that. We need God to give us mercy that is getting, or not getting, mercy is not getting what we deserve. And we need to pray for grace that God gives us what we, um, that we don't deserve. And we need grace upon our nation, forgiveness. Let's pray. Let's pray for people to pray. Pray for your church. Pray for our pastor. Pray for me. I would love it. Let's keep on praying for each other. Have no birthdays this week. If you have a birthday or know someone in our church that has a birthday, please let me know uh, this upcoming week. And here we go. Next, we have an interview. Let's enjoy it. Hey, teenager. Brother Josh is back here again. I have my lovely wife with us today. And then I have Miss Melissa Bennett with us. And uh, like in times past and other episodes that we've had, I always like to bring someone to you that um, has grown up in our church, and Miss Melissa has. Mm -hmm. And uh, Melissa, when did you start going to our church? I started in 2004. I was invited by Brother Osgood on bus one, and my family has been coming to the church for a while, and yeah. All right, 2004. How old were you then? I think I was like six, seven years old. So now we can figure out how old you are, I guess, huh? Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't do this. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, <laughs> But were, uh, were you saved at our church, Melissa? Yes, I was. It took a couple weeks after I was invited, but uh -huh. then I got saved. Wonderful. Was it, uh, do you remember in particular it was, or was it a junior church or something, or? Uh, I don't remember the person, uh -huh. but I was in like first, second yeah. grade. I remember someone sharing the gospel. Yeah, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, listen, um, you know, Melissa has a, maybe a different testimony but than other people that we've interviewed before, but I know many of our teenagers have the same testament that Melissa has, and she has been faithful to the Lord. She has come to church on her own, and maybe with her brothers and sisters that have come yeah. with her through the years, but she has been faithful many, many years, and now she's serving in our church. She teaches Sunday school in what department? The, the preschool and kindergarten. With Miss Penny. Yep. All right, and Brother Beth. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. And then, and then she works in our primary church with Brother Carl, I believe, right? Yep, that's right. Awesome. I hope. So God is using Miss Melissa in our church. She's grown up here, and it, it does give me a great joy to see her now. As one time she was a child growing up in our, growing up in our church, and now she's teaching children today. That is awesome. Miss Melissa, just uh, wanted to ask you something. And I know, like I said already, there's a lot of teenagers that can relate to you with your with your past and when mm -hmm. you you know how you um, grew up in our church and everything. Is there, um, what was your motivation that you would say that caused you just to say, to stay so faithful to the Lord? Well, when I was growing up, um, my family was invited and my parents didn't come, but I was glad that my Sunday school teachers cared about me and my bus workers, like Brother Osgood on bus one, and they cared about me. And seeing all that love from them, I understood God's love more and I just wanted to come to church more and serve him and give back to God. Amen. So basically the love of God, the love that people have shown you, yes. caused you and motivated you to keep on being faithful. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, great. And, and in connection with that, Miss Melissa, one more question. Is there any um, advice or encouraging words that you would give to our young people that perhaps come to our church by themselves? I do. If you come by yourself, it's all right. Just keep doing what God wants you to do and you'll make friends and church family. I met a lot of people who come by themselves and I, uh, some people reach out to me, and sometimes I reach out to some other people, and you grow in connection as a church family. And so it's okay, and God loves you, no matter who you come with. Amen. Well, that's good. That's encouraging words, Ms. Melissa. I appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that.
We'll talk to you in a little bit. Brother Josh Giesler's back here for our teen challenge with another Bible truth for you today. God laid this truth in my heart, just a good reminder, and it is this. We need to be diligent, diligent workers. If you have your Bibles, get them out. Turn to 1 Kings chapter number 19. 1 Kings chapter number 19. Read this story a few weeks ago, and it, uh, God laid in my heart to be able to preach this to you. Um, 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're going to start at verse number 18, but just give you a little background about what's going on right here. This is after, shortly after, the prophet Elijah had his showdown with King Ahab and Jezebel's prophets on Mount Carmel, and God gave him a great victory. After that happened, the Bible says he, that Elijah was weary, and he went running because Jezebel was out to kill him. And then after that, God does encourage Elijah and says, listen, we, I have other prophets there and I want you to go pick your mentor. I want you to mentor someone else. So we pick up in verse 18 of 1 Kings chapter 19. And it says this. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Here you go. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? Verse 21 says, And he returned back from him and took the yoke of oxen, slew them, and bore their flesh with the instruments of oxen, and gave it to the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. I want to focus on the diligence that Elisha, the younger prophet, the, the, the man that Elijah picked, I want to focus on the diligence and the hardworking ethics that Elisha already had. He was chosen. So Elijah chooses, through God, uh, chooses Elisha to um, take the place of Elijah. And what an honor that must have been. But Elisha was already... already diligently work. And look what it says in verse number 12. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. A yoke is a team of two plowing the, plowing the fields. Wherever it must have been, not sure what they were growing, but plowing the fields with 12 yoke of oxen. Now when I first read that, I think, was he, that's 24 cows, guys. I first one I thought about, is that mean he had 24 cows at one time plowing? Perhaps, that would be amazing, but I think if anything, I think he had maybe workers or servants underneath him, and that he was directing them, he was in charge of the work being done. And it says, because it makes mention, it says, and, um, and he was with the twelfth, so he was working himself. He wasn't just supervising and standing, watching God, everybody working, he was working already. But it showed some diligence that he had, and that he had responsibilities, and he fulfilled them. And maybe that's why, young person, Elijah chose Elisha to be his mentor. And that's something he pre and you read the rest of the verse, and Elijah chooses him. He says, "But and Elijah comes back. Hey, listen, can I tell my family goodbye?" And he did some work. He killed the oxen. He fed the people. He took care of his responsibilities that he already had. He preps, and then he says goodbye to his family. And then he follows Elijah. I want you to notice a couple things about this whole story. Just make sure, I'm not trying to be redundant, but I want to make sure you understand this. Let's notice is this. Elisha was already diligently working before he was chose by Elijah. And our, how we can relate to this is this. God chooses people for special jobs that are already working. Listen, we all want that special job. We all want to be chosen to a certain position. But if we're not working, God is not going to put us in that spot. Here's something else, something else to notice. Elisha fulfilled his responsibility to his family, then fall Elijah. He didn't just drop everything and go. Though sometimes maybe we go and fault on that, but he made sure he took care of his responsibilities, told his mom and dad what was going on. He Bible says he fed the people. He slew, the, slew oxen and boiled their flesh instruments and gave it to the people. So he must have had some responsibility here. He finished the job. And then it says, Elisha ministered to Elijah. Last part of that verse, verse 21, and ministered unto him. 
he, even though he was chosen by the great prophet Elijah, he still was a servant. He still ministered to him. Elisha was diligent. And that's what I want to motivate you teenagers right now to be diligent. Be diligent workers. W-O-R-K. That is maybe a word that some of us are afraid of, or some afraid of, of us are afraid to do. But good old-fashioned work. W-O-R-K. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 4, it says, The soul of the slugger desireth and hath nothing. That means the soul, the slugger, the lazy person, he wants a lot, but he doesn't have any because he's lazy. But the rest of that verse says, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Someone that goes out and diligent, finds the work, whatever it might be, he is blessed. God blesses them and brings production to them. I, um, there is something, you ask me, the best thing that I have learned from my parents that now as an adult, what I do cherish is that this, is that they taught me how to work. I'm so glad my parents taught me how to work from a very young age. I remember doing chores each and every day. And as I got older, there was more and more work to do and more and bigger responsibilities. I do remember my first job was always to take out the trash. That was my job, to make sure to take out the trash, to pull the trash cans out for the garbage truck to come by and get it. That was my job. As I grew older, my job was the wonderful, I had the wonderful privilege of cleaning the bathroom every single day. Every single day, seven people in my family cleaning the bathroom, scrubbing that, that toilet and, and cleaning the sink and scrubbing the, 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 the bathtub was not fun. But that was my job, and I learned how to do it. As I got older, I started working on cars and had jobs outside and here and there. I thank God my parents gave me work to do, and it gave, it gave me a lot of stuff. It gave me confidence in my life. I'm so glad my parents gave me chores. We had a rule in our house. Followed uh, the verse, 2 Thessalonians 3.10. If, 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 if even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any should not work, neither should he eat. That was something my dad lived by. Only took one time, only took one time that I figured out I'm going to do my chores when one day I came to the dinner table one night and there was no plate for me. And I realized I did do my chores. That me like got up, went and did my chores, and came back and eat. My dad wasn't going to let me eat till I did my job, my chores for that day. I thank God for that. Let me give you some principles about working. And I say this in thinking about what's going on. A lot of us are at home. We do not uh, have school going on. Kind of like the summertime that we already have. But young person, listen, you ought to be diligent at work at all times. Have diligence. Look for things to do around the house. Helping your parents out. And a lot of your parents are still working. You're home by yourself. Listen, your parents, just give some ideas. I'm going to help myself here. But, hey, your parents should have to come home and do the dishes. You should have it done already. Um, your, your dad, you, your parents should have you, um, when, they shouldn't be vacuuming the house or cleaning the house and even doing laundry if you're capable of doing that. They, you should already have that done. When they come home, your mom and dad come home, they'll, they'll, they'll be able to rest because they worked all day paying for all what you already enjoy, your food, electricity, your house, everything else. Let's see a person. Let's be diligent. Let's be diligent in the work and look for jobs to do around their house. Give me some, let me give you some ethics here. Here's some ethics about how we ought to work. An ethic is a moral principle that we all should have. We should be honest. Being honest. Honesty is always good, period. All right, But we should be an honest worker. Tell the truth. Don't cheat on your hours of work. Um, if, if someone gives you a job to do, you say you're going to do it, do it. And don't do a halfway job. Don't, don't cut the work. If you happen to get paid um, or have a job already, if you get paid for three hours of work, you should, get, um, um, you should do three hours of work. Here's another uh, moral, ethical principle that you ought to have about work is being diligent. Like I said, what is diligence? A constant, an effort to accomplish something. It means you work hard. You be, you be quick. You don't be lazy. You don't, you don't go slow if, we, if you know you can do a better job. Being attentive and persistent in doing anything like a diligent student. Hey, some of you guys still have schoolwork you're doing. Let's have diligence in getting that done. Don't put it off at night because something always comes up. Start in the morning and do your jobs in the morning. Stay diligent all around the house. Here's another ethic, another principle we ought to have about work is have an initiative. Kind of just what I've said already. When you see a job to do, do it. Don't wait till someone tells you to do it. If you see a job that needs to be done, just have initiative, have enough character. Don't be lazy and just do the job. Uh, whether it be a piece of paper on the ground or having to cut the grass or pull the weeds or coming up or trimming a tree or blowing the leaves or cleaning up a mess. Listen, have the diligence and have the initiative to just do it. 
uh, right away. When you see a job to do it, do it. Here's another, have an, uh, another ethical, another principle. How about uh, completing the job or put a completeness, I guess I could call it. Um, you have a job, finish it, bottom line. If someone gives you a job to do, do it. And sometimes, well, it took longer than I thought. Well, hey, if you committed to a job, they told you the do job, get the job done. It might take more than a day, but listen, have some time. Make sure I'm getting the job by this day. I'm getting it done. Complete the job. Don't let it go unfinished. And then another ethic that you should consider is being efficient. Efficient. What does that mean? Is working in the best way with the least waste of time and effort. You know, you could have and you can complete a job, but you have a lot of waste. Hey, no employer, no boss is going to want that. He wants the job completed, yes, and he wants to complete it right. Don't get me wrong. He wants the job completed, well, no, no halfway jobs. But listen, we shouldn't waste time if we know we can do a better job. We shouldn't have a lot of waste or, or uh, uh, material, whatever it might be. Listen, do the best job. Give your best in every task. W-O-R-K, work. Let's be diligent workers. We definitely learn a lesson here from Elisha. He was chosen because I believe that he was already working. He was already diligent and God gave him another position. He became the prophet of God for the whole nation of Israel. God used him in a great way. If you also do take count of this, he was even used double of what the Bible gives us more than Elijah, his, his, uh, his, uh, his mentor. He was blessed when he did more miracles, the Bible says. Listen, learn how to work right now. Learn how to work right now, young person. Do not wait. Oh, I'll, I'll learn how to work when I become an adult. Yeah, you you will, and, and you'll have and you'll have regrets, and and you won't be as ahead of the curb. I say, if you say that way, um, of other people. Work right now. Work right now. God's going to bless you. I promise you. Work right now. Give your best. Hey, can an adult depend on you? Are you trusted with responsibilities? If someone gives you a job to do, are you trusted? Can you be dependent? I hope you can. There's a lot of things we can learn from this story. Let's be diligent workers. Young person, we love you. And uh, hey, we have time now. God sees fit. This is what's going on. And uh, hey, let's take advantage of what we can do. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a lot of extra stuff done around the house. And um, uh, here and there, things I've been wanting to fix. So hey, do the same. Be diligent workers. Wherever job you might have be given by your parents. If you have schoolwork, Get it done. Do not procrastinate. Be a diligent worker. We love you here at Valley Baptist Church. I believe soon we'll be able to meet all together. Hey, look forward to seeing all your faces, your smiling faces tomorrow on our Zoom. Don't forget about it. We'll talk to you later. God bless.